Mongkut means crown and also uh, the name of King Lamafort in Thailand. So uh, the title came from uh, two sources of uh, th this meaning. I have been had this idea for for many years already, uh, back to like five or six years ago. And there was one work from uh, one professor in Thailand who investigated on uh, one painting from your home. And uh, he came up with this uh, history of Mongkut. Uh, when I heard about this story, it was really fascinating to do this project because it was something that we, we lost during that period when uh, French uh, occupied uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, and some part of Laos and, and Britain occupied this Burmish, uh, Burma and Pakistani and this part of uh, Southeast Asia. Only Siam, uh, which is a former name of Thailand, that allow uh, all Western to, to stay in this country. So it was so cosmopolitan. Arne is one of few artists, I would say, that is interested to embrace this idea that it is actually a region. Um, the idea of Southeast Asia as a post-World War II construct. And um, still today, it's, it's not easy to get these nations to work together. King Lama IV uh, thought that he would have to, to make some domestic relation with French to another powerful country. So he sent uh, this royal gift to, uh, to offer to Napoleon III on 1861. For Arun, it's a contemporary subject to revisit history. And he does so by um, revealing to us that 150 years ago, and even prior to this, in, say, the context of Siam at that time, it's a very cosmopolitan place. And he reminds us by looking you know, at one object and deconstructing or unraveling one object that that time was also transnational. King Lama IV uh, replicated this crowd from his own crowd and no one uh, ever saw, ever seen that the, the, the original of this crown because it has been locked inside the palace in Thailand. So no archive, no photos. The only way to, to learn about this crowd is to come to Fontainebleau because I cannot get inside the palace and no one see, there's no image, there's no detail. Mr. Uh, Pierre Baptiste told me how French react to the crowd when they received that crowd from King Lama IV, for example, like how Napoleon reacted to this crowd, how a uh, writer wrote about this crowd and, and all the Siamese embass em embassy uh, that met Napoleon on that day. So he talks about uh, the history and, uh, and, and something that has been written on that day. We went to Fontainebleau with uh, this uh, infrared uh, scanner, 3D scanner, that we could uh, measuring uh, the 3D uh, binary and use this as a data of how high and how wide and uh, the featuring of the, the, the profile of the, of the crowd. The way that Aaron is able to kind of fixate on like, one object and then open all of the stories for different parties, then he's able to kind of re-narrate um, history for the context of today. So he's very careful to say, for example, with Mankot, he's approaching all of the subject from today. So when he's at Fontainebleau, he's with Pierre Baptiste from the Guimet, thinking about these objects from the perspective of today. And same with Warlock, the craftswoman. She's talking about how to make these objects today. So I went there and I met her and I asked her, like, if you could help me replicate this crown. Uh, she said yes. And then I asked about her family's life and 
And at that time, I discovered that she, she was related to King Lama Fos. And that was, I think that was the first um, miracle happened to this project. The work will evolve by the context around them. So, so this is the answer that uh, it's not about contemporaneous, it's just evolved by time, by the context around the object. This is important because uh, it's about past, present, future. It's not just about the past, uh, it's not just about the future. It's work together.